Asia. Tectonically highly active, as these earthquakes demonstrate, active faulting. But the region is an amalgamation of distinct crustal blocks and fragments caught up as the southern blocks have moved northwards. These ancient blocks impact on the distribution of earthquakes, some forming regions of relative stability. Let's follow Asia's history of tectonic assembly, the incorporation of the blocks and fragments, which tell a tectonic story that reaches back hundreds of millions of years. Stepping back then, these are the modern plate boundaries. Some big old continental blocks and some smaller ones between. These are old continental crust, part of a global constellation, including the oldest crust on Earth. These old cold blocks are called cratons. And you can try to tie some of them together, now separated by modern oceans, which is, of course, much younger crust. Putting these blocks back together and seeing how they've moved relative to one another, well, that's paleogeography. We'll look at this history more carefully later, but how do we know this has happened? It's a game geologists have played for over a century to some of the oldest tectonic investigations. But now we have far more information. Take this reconstruction from 295 million years ago, an assembly of continents, and we know this because the fit reconstructs a patch of major glaciation centred on the South Pole. And we can use fossils. These brachiopods all cluster in a tight pack on a single small continent, but not elsewhere, suggesting that this continent was isolated. All these early reptiles, land-based and found in all these places, indicating at this time, some 250 million years ago, they were all joined up in some way as a continuous landmass. But the key information comes from the techniques of paleomagnetism. Imagine a basalt lava flow. Like everything else on Earth, it erupts into an ambient magnetic field. And as it cools, this field, its orientation, can be frozen into the rock. So the Earth's magnetic field has this form, with flow lines which come out from the South Pole and go back down at the north. They point in and out of the Earth. The angle these flow lines make to the Earth's surface are like this. It's called inclination and relates directly to latitude. So let's imagine now we go to a high latitude for a bit of Arctic field work and collect a rock. And we measure the magnetic inclination it records, the inclination at its time of formation. So this is paleomagnetism. If this measured paleo inclination is different from the modern inclination, the place we collect our rock, then it means one of two things. Either the global magnetic field has changed or the rock has moved relative to it. In other words, there's been tectonics. So back to our rock and its collection site. The yellow arrows are the paleo inclination, and this is the inclination of the magnetic field today at that site. They're different. The inclination has changed over time. If the rock hasn't been tilted locally, this difference of inclination tells us that the rock has changed its place on the Earth since it was formed relative to the Earth's magnetic north pole. It's changed latitude. Our rock has moved north. By making lots of measurements for a succession of rocks in the same location, but different ages, we can build up a history of tectonic displacement of the paleo latitude of that part of a continent. So let's look at some real information. We're plotting paleo latitude against time. On our plot, here's the equator. So let's look at a location in northern Australia, just south of the equator today. And this is how our part of northern Australia has moved relative to the magnetic North Pole over the past 400 million years. 150 million years ago, Australia lay further south, joined to Antarctica. It began to rift away 
around 80 million years ago, but was still way south. Then it moved north quite rapidly. So that's a quick look at how Australia's moved. Now let's compare this history with that for one of those blocks in East Asia, the Sibumasu terrain, a sliver of crust largely in modern Western Thailand. It currently lies north of the equator, but this is its history. Look, back in the early Permian, maybe 300 million years ago, Australia and Sibumasu were at the same paleo latitude, part of the supercontinent of Gondwana land. Both move north, but Sibumasu does it faster. They therefore rift apart. We can use this information to show a history in side on profiles in sort of cartoon form. So we start with the edge of Gondwana land glaciated, but into the Permian, Sibumasu drifts away, an ocean, so called Mesotethis, opens to its south. Let's step back to the start and now add the Eurasian side. And to the north, there's another ocean, so called Paleotethis, and it's closing, being subducted and as a consequence, creating a chain of volcanoes, the Sukhothai Arc. This is an ancient long gone ring of fire and like modern Japan, a small back arc basin forms. Then closes as Subumasu collides to become part of Eurasia. This pattern of tectonics Fragments of Gondwana land rifting away and then colliding and becoming part of Eurasia has been in play for hundreds of millions of years. Now, large blocks of Gondwana land are becoming attached. The continents of Arabia and India, they continue to collide and in the jaws of the vice, fragments rifted from Gondwana land in the early Paleozoic, others in the Devonian, Subramasu and others rifted in the early Permian, and then these pieces. The volcanic arc caught up in the collision. So let's play the paleogeography movie. With its dancing and colliding continents. A tectonic jigsaw puzzle of rifting, drifting and collision. So Asia is a collage of continental blocks and these influence modern tectonics. Consider the Tarim block and the edge of the South China block, both fragments of old, cold continental crust. They act almost rigidly during the modern collision tectonics as India drives in. Rather like hazelnuts in a squashed warm chocolate bar. Tectonic processes of the modern world in the continents are strongly controlled by what's gone before. So, in tectonics, history matters.